India's bioeconomy is growing at a breakneck speed and this is not me saying there is a report from Niti Aayog released two days ago which says that. I'll try to put the link of this particular report in the comment section as well as description. You can check that out. But I have thoroughly gone, gone through that PDF and I'm here to tell you what they're not telling you and what you should be knowing and how can you stay relevant and grow in this new game changing economy. Now, first things first, uh, I'm not here to criticize anybody. I'm just going to give you uh, positive pointers, but at the same time, look at the report from a critic point of view. But definitely it is all about how exactly the bioeconomy is growing. Now, first things first, we observed that they're using the term bioeconomy, no longer biotech industry. So when the moment I say biotech industry, it's a smaller subset of the bioeconomy. So that's the smartness. So what really they are hiding in one line, they are hiding that earlier they used to say biotech industry is $120 billion. Now they're saying bioeconomy is $300 billion. So basically they are incorporating a lot of other sectors also forestry, agriculture and all other sectors technology driven initiatives also under this particular initiative but however they are not wrong bioeconomy is growing 300 billion dollars is the projection by 2030 and agriculture is going to be the key player now this is like something which is new earlier we used to perceive that agriculture is a part of uh, you know agri biotech is a part of biotech industry but now what they are doing is they are saying that agriculture as a whole is getting impacted because of biotech so yeah that's a bioeconomy right so by 2047, Indian government is targeting self-reliance in food security and nutrition, climate resilience, data-driven agriculture, sustainable biomanufacturing and export grade traceability. Now this is what they are targeting and how they are trying to achieve this through biotech, AI, design thinking and systems thinking. They're looking at uberization of the agriculture land agricultural machinery but at the same time they're looking at how AI and biotech can come together in the agricultural sector and that's where this positive optimism is all about now having said that uh, we should not just become very positive and start jumping around the truth is it might not happen it may happen but um, 90% chance that yes, it will happen. Now, having said that, how can you be relevant in this new bioeconomy, which is game changing? See, earlier when you were taught, you were taught that, okay, there is, you do MSc biotech, you get a job in the biotech industry. That's not true anymore. You get a job in the bioeconomy. And that means uh, everything, including agricultural, for, forestry, climate resilience, and everything in between. So what can you do in this changing economy is what we are going to talk about in this videos. Now, one important thing I have observed whenever government tries to do this is, see, there are really some good people out there at the top who are trying to bring in some positive change. And I really appreciate that. But at the same time, at the grassroots level, things take a lot of time to change and that is going to be a challenge always for India because India is a huge country with the geography which we have it is actually a country with 25 countries within it right so there is always a challenge but government is trying to leverage it with their um, agri stack Vistar and other initiatives now having said that the real problem what I have seen in the biotech industry not bioeconomy is Students do research, uh, there are various companies which do research, but they have not crafted this uh, readiness of converting their research into a market ready product. And this problem is the biggest problem which you as a youngster can fix. Now, whether you join a company as a R&D executive, assistant or a product manager, no matter what role you join, your focus should be on translation readiness. How can you think beyond your lab? How can you think that, okay, how my this particular research is going to translate into a commercially viable product? So this pathway has to be built. And since this pathway is not built, that is one of the reasons companies fail. That is one of the reasons why Biocon and Syngene became so successful because they figured out the pathway to commercialization and Scientists forget that they are scientists, right? So you are taught science. So you are always thinking about doing science, but commercially viable science is what is a need of that. Now, having said that, 
you do a project in the lab. The other day I had three uh, entrepreneurs who came to me from Bangalore Bio Innovation Center. They have created an excellent wearable product which can even do ECG, right? But they are struggling because of the hardware they have to import from China. There is no vendor available here. The software takes a lot of time to create. And so they are struggling to convert from lab to pilot to production, right? So if we can help these kind of entrepreneurs or you can join these kind of companies and help them. That is where the bioeconomy, the real bioeconomy will grow, right? Now, how do you do that? You have to develop hybrid skills. Now, what, is, what, are, the, what are the hybrid skills? See, the first thing is your core skill, which you have already learned, which is the biotech uh, ecosystem skills, research and development skills, regulatory affairs skills and all of that. Now, the second type of training you have to do is hands-on training on bioinformatics, artificial intelligence, and how can you apply that. The same report which I'm talking about, they have mentioned that they increased the output of agriculture through their uh, initiative in Telangana by 21% because they implemented AI in agriculture, right? At particular initiative, it's called, I think, Sagu Bhagu initiative in Telangana. So that helps them achieve this, right? So how can you implement AI in biological problems? The second step, right? The first step is the core biology is done. The second step is how can you implement AI in biology? And the third step will be how can you partner with others and how can you develop products, right? So you have to stop thinking from a job perspective. Don't be a job seeker anymore. You can also start your own companies. You can uh, leverage your partnerships. You can reach out to people. You can reach out to me. You're most welcome to come and visit me and get mentored. But if you think this way, if you stop thinking uh, that, okay, I have to get a job. Instead, you think that how can I leverage AI, machine learning, in agriculture, in any part of the bioeconomy, whether, whether it is marine or forestry, whether it is um, biotech, existing problems or new problems, whether it is disease biology, whether it is uh, any part of the biotech ecosystem, food technology, you have a product. Now, always remember that if you have figured out the path to commercialization once, it can be used multiple times for multiple other products. And this is where my dear young scientists are failing. So you have to leverage partnerships and the eco ecosystem access. You can always reach out to iBiome, which is an excellent platform for companies or the, you know startups who can really scale up. You have to develop the hybrid skill sets and you have to be ready for translation. That is whatever you did, the research has to become commercially viable. If you can do these three things, it is very easy to drive the bioeconomy not just to $300 billion to a $1 trillion also. So I would like to call upon all the Biotechnica subscribers who have seen this news that yes, the bioeconomy is going to be $300 billion. I'm here to tell you that yes, the fact they're hiding is they're including agriculture into it now and uh, forestry and climate resilience and all of that in that. I don't see there is any harm in that. But having said that, India has big pressing problems. And every problem is an opportunity for a biotechnologist like you. So the first step you have to take is build that idea in your mind, right? Now debate it with uh, your friends, or your family, take a train ticket or a bus ticket, come and reach me. I'll meet you. We'll discuss. Let's figure out a plan, right? And let's start companies, right? The more the number of companies we start, the more number of bioprofessionals we can place or we can recruit and at the same time so that solves the unemployment problem and at the same time we will have more products which will be available to the general public and that will be the best thing which you could do now most of you think that you can only make medicines and biotech that's not true you can create nutraceuticals you can create food tech items you can get into anything and everything which is remotely related to life science also okay so the time has come to leverage the ecosystem which Biotechnica has built and come meet me, I'll help you start a company because I know somebody out there is going to be the driver of this $300 billion bioeconomy. So yes, they're hiding that uh, it's no longer just biotech. They are having agriculture and forestry in this. But at the same time, agriculture is going to be the biggest driver of growth of our not just bioeconomy, but the entire economy. But that means 
there is so much more which can be done in agriculture. You can learn CRISPR, you can um, learn bioinformatics, you can develop yourself uh, as a service provider for the agriculture industry, you can uh, develop um, or have patenting in intellectual property services, you can get into uh, regulatory landscape, you can also provide services in clinical trials, in genetically modified organisms, novel therapeutics and much more. So, sky is the limit, 300 billion dollars is just getting started, we are just getting started, right? So, the youth of today is gonna be the CEO of tomorrow, but to become the CEO of a company, first you have to become the CEO of your life. Make a decision, okay? Calculated risks always takes you to your destination. So all the best and let's win with this $300 billion bioeconomy. All the best.